In today's video, I'm going to be trying out kids' oil pastels. When I was out shopping for my Wilco's Let's Create set, I saw these on the way out of the shop. They are not part of the Let's Create set, as they are made by Bic, not Wilco's. However, they are marked as kids, and that's what I wanted to do in trying out kids' art supplies. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and swatch them, and then I'll be following a short course on Skillshare to learn the techniques, and then we're going to be trying out making a full-scale piece. What I've seen so far in the course is that watercolour paper can be used, the higher grade the better. When I was in the shop, initially this was the only paper available, so this is what I will be doing my tests on. It's 180 GSM. I do have a watercolour block that I will be using, as that is a much higher grade of GSM, and also it's a bigger piece of paper, and I want to try and create as epic an artwork as possible. The colours are very nice, they seem to have a good range. I'm interested to try these because as seen in my soft pastels video, I do not like the feel of soft pastels, however, as these are oil pastels, they're like waxier, so hopefully I won't feel the same like skin crawly sensation. I've swatched them out now, they almost feel like lipstick in a way, like it's got that kind of like smooth feel almost, it's a very nice feeling, and it doesn't make my skin crawl, so that's really good. I really like the colours, like they're so bright and vivid, it's really good. I also like that we've got like a pinky skin tone kind of colour, which can be mixed with like a brown dark colour to create like a, a spectrum of shades, so that's quite good. So the colours are fantastic. I think the set was £3 and I got it reduced to 2 just because there was a sale on. Even if I paid £3 for it, my first impression of it is very nice as someone who's not used pastels before and is just like starting out with them. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to follow the Skillshare part of the course that tells me like how to use them, what they can go with, that kind of thing. I have already prepped a little bit. I've got turpentine, which in the course they say you need to have a solvent and turpentine is a solvent, although this is a substitute so it's not, it's not got as many fumes and stuff so it's a little bit better for you. I also have some kitchen roll in case of any kind of accidents or spillages or emergencies. I've also got some painter's tape. This isn't in the course, but I've found this painter's tape very useful for a number of things, so I'm wondering if I can use it some way. I have my ruler, which is just a really old ruler. Um, it's a ruler. <laughs> last thing I have is my trusty craft knife in case I need to sharpen the edges or anything. Let's go ahead and find out what we're supposed to do with these pastels. I've just gone through the majority of the course I chose on Skillshare, which incidentally I will link in the description if you want to follow it yourself. I went through the parts of the courses explaining how oil pastels work, what they're made of, what kinds of grade there are, how to blend them, how to shade them, all kinds of stuff. I ran into one 
issue straight away. I don't have a white and I don't have a grey. However, it's not the be all and end all because as you can see, you can blend the colours pretty much any way you want. It's pretty flexible, so not having a white or a grey is neither here nor there really. The thing I found really helpful from that whole course was the techniques in applying and blending. So the first thing she told me was the pressure blend where you basically press really hard. There's the light pressure blend where you basically don't press very much and it's more to get the texture of the paper. There is something called scumbling, which is a great word, where you lay down a flat colour and then you sort of doodle almost on top of, like changing direction so you can create this texture. It's good for fur and leather and sea and anything with that kind of a texture. Then there's stippling, where you it's basically dots you basically are creating a third colour without actually putting that colour down. It's more of an optical illusion. There is the dry finger blending, which I did not enjoy. There is the wet finger blending. I tried it with water, which she initially suggested. I didn't like that. She then said to use linseed oil, which is what you'd normally use for oil painting. However, and I don't know if this is going to make me unpopular or not, linseed oil is bloody expensive. So what I've always used is sunflower oil. It's worked fine for me. I've never had any issues with it. I've used it with oil paints plenty of times, and it worked exactly the same with the oil pestles. So I liked the wet finger quite a lot but I don't like this like rubbing of my fingers on the paper it makes me go mm. the next thing she taught me was to use a towel or paper towel to basically create a little pad and then you're basically doing what you did with a dry finger but with a paper towel this one here was using a cotton board it worked but I didn't like it. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. The next one was the blending stump, which is one of these. It worked similar to the cotton bud, but I'd say more effective and it felt less scratchy. So if I had to use one of them, I'd prefer the blending stump. The solvent, which is my turpentine substitute, worked beautifully. I really, really liked it. It just sort of glided on. There was no issues. I didn't really have to rub hard or anything. It worked really nicely. Now, there was two other things she suggested. One was Colourless Blender and one was Zest It. Zest It is, I think it's like an orange or citric based solvent. So it's like this, but it's like natural. I would prefer to use the Zest It, but I don't have any right now. I may order some if I really enjoy our oil pastels, but for now I have turpentine, so that's what I'm going to use. The other thing she said was to use a colourless blender, which I first thought she meant by Copic marker, and I was like, no. What she actually means is there is literally a colourless version of um, an oil pastel similar to a colourless blender in Copic. It's just the like waxy oil base with no pigment, and it's used the same way as you would use a colourless blender for Copics. Some other cool things she showed me. If you take a gift card or an old credit card that you don't need anymore you can put it on like edges and like rub down and you'll create this nice edge which is really cool you can do the same with a piece of paper which means you can create your own shapes and then just like rub over it the third thing that i really liked about like the mark making as long as it's candle wax it works apparently you basically rub it on the paper in whatever shape you want you go over it with the oil pastel and then you like scrape it off using this it leaves the white of the paper. Like, I didn't even realise that was a thing. So the last thing she showed me is you can scrape some of your oil pastel and a bit of your solvent or zest it, whichever you've got, and you make almost like a paint. She said it works better with higher quality oil pastels. I ended up having like quite a few little bits. It still worked pretty well and when I painted over the area where there'd been wax, it worked the same as the scratchy thing. There's a whole section more for the course i was getting to the point where i think i've learned quite a lot and i'm too excited now i just want to like get into doing a piece so i'm gonna do a few tests of my own and then i'm just gonna go for it
here we have it. This is the final piece using the Bic Kids oil pastels. I really, really enjoyed playing with these oil pastels, which I did not expect. If you saw my previous video on soft pastels, I hate those things, but I really like the oil pastels. I think I might have said it in the intro, but I think it's to do with the fact that one is like a chalky base and this is like smoother almost. That was my original concept, super basic. This is what it became. I'm, I'm, I honestly, honestly, when I finished this and I did the final bit on it and I sat back to look at it, I cried. I genuinely cried because I was so disappointed with how the soft pastels piece came out and I thought this was going to be a repeat offender. I think it's so, so cool. I'm so happy with it. I genuinely want to frame it and put it up on a wall. That's how proud I am of it. This is my first time ever properly using oil pastels so I, I'm, I'm just so overwhelmed with how well it's gone. It wasn't an easy feat, it was two days of work totaling about six hours of footage and it was worth every second. I think I paid two pounds, they're originally three pounds for these. They're absolutely wonderful, for someone just starting off they're really great, like I use these to death especially the brown, the light blue, and this yellow. I just used and used and used, and they've held up extremely well. I've not had any issues with them, genuinely. They don't work as well as professional oil pastels, obviously, but I, I'm shocked at how well they've actually worked, and as someone who was a complete novice. I did add a few things that weren't oil pastels. It was only the very end, like I added a bit of gold detailing to the sword, the hill and the, the crown. I don't know if you can see. I think that just adds that little something on it. Other than that, everything you see was done with the oil pastels or techniques of the oil pastels. So I did a few different techniques. This side of the wing I mainly blended with the oil pastels as much as I could and then went in with the turpentine. On this side I was very rough with them. I just did a sort of basic shades and then went in. And you can see one side has got stronger colours than the other one. For these edges here I actually used a candle. After I'd done my sketch I went around with the candle. It worked in some places and it didn't work in others. I would say that's more down to my application of the technique rather than the technique itself. But it still worked quite nicely and it gives this real like this, the two characters stand out. The background is probably my favourite element. I would say like I, I love it all together but I really like the background. The one thing I would say and this is just me learning when I did my pencil sketch I should have been much lighter with my pencil because the pencil shines through in a few places. I don't really have much more to say. Fantastic materials, really worth buying for yourself as a novice or definitely as a child. The only thing I would say obviously don't use a solvent with a child. There's other techniques you can use that will work better for kids or to be honest they can just blend them without any of that. I could have probably done this whole piece without actually using any solvent. It just would have been more difficult and I personally like the painterly way of doing things. The outlines I just left as the basic marks they were because I kind of like the contrast between this like smoothness and then these rough kind of edges. I thought it created a little bit of textural difference. I'm sounding like one of my old uni essays with all these jargony words. <laughs> if you liked that video give it a like, if you really liked it subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.